primer. And here is your question. Yes. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering a clinical examination station, kindly begin the yes. examination. Uh, I am Dr. Khawar Rahman, one of the surgical candidate. May uh, I ask your name and age, please? Yes, I'm 40 years old, Lisa. Yes. Okay, Sharon, and uh, I will uh, expose the patient with dignity and uh, uh, her back and legs are exposed and upper limbs are exposed with dignity. And uh, I will wash my hand. I will wash my hand. Uh, then, uh, then I will check talking at it's anything else is present or not. Then I will ask the patient to walk to this door and I will check uh, her gait. Then a uh, patient is, is standing in front of me and on inspection, I will check uh, the posture of the patient and uh, I will check the neck, sh shoulder shoulders, and uh, then I will check from the side, any, any wound, any scars. Then I check from the sides and check any cervical lordosis, uh, kyphosis, thoracic kyphosis and lumbar lordosis. And, and uh, then I will check from the back. I will also check the scoliosis then back there is any scar, operation marks, and tufts of hair, erythema, and any deformity. Yes. This is, this is the inspection of the patient. Then I will palpate the patient from the back. I will check uh, the cervical spine, then thoracic spine and lumbar spine. And I will also check paraspinal muscles paraspinal muscle, and I will check uh, the, uh, uh, then I can do, uh, ask the patient to uh, flex his neck and then turn uh, uh, her ear to the right, then left, then, then turn right, turn left. Then I ask the patient to bend forward, then extend. Uh, then I ask the patient to turn right and then turn left. Then patient will be sit on the chair and I ask to both uh, uh, her hand on the shoulders and turn right and left. Then uh, patient is standing position and I will do the Schober test. I will mark the posterior iliac spine and then 10 centimeter above and five centimeter below and measuring tab. I, I will do all these things without, without speaking to the examiner. I will just do it, all these things. But here patient is not present. Then. I, it should be more than 20 centimeter if it is normal. Okay. Then patient is patient is in lying position and I will do the straight leg lassitude uh, test in which patient, uh, leg will be raised. And then I flex the knee joint and ask the patient, do you have any pain relief? Uh, and then I will flex the hip. If there is a problem in the back, pain will be increased. Then I can do the Brigard Bragard test in which a straight leg rising and I will dorsiflex the foot. This is called Bragard test. Then a patient, uh, I, I will do the, I will ask the patient to elevate his head and patient uh, umbilicus will be shifted to uh, uh, at that direction that is normal. And uh, I can uh, also uh, uh, do the uh, test in which uh, I will, I will uh, stroke the, uh, uh, I will uh, flex the head of the patient and patient have uh, pain in the radicular pain. And then I will uh, abdominal 
stroking i will done and blicus will twitch uh, either uh, t t1 36 to t10 or t11 to t12 blow and uh, then i can do the uh, reverse the patient and do the femoral stretch test reverse lassigu test then i will do the uh, reflexes of the upper and lower limb if time allowed, and I will do the vascular examination and do the upper and lower limb uh, neurological examination. And I will complete this. Uh, I, uh, the, and the examination and is complete. Yes. Clonus. Uh, yes, I can do the clonus. Clonus can be done. Yes. And leg roll as well. Leg lift and you've done the leg lift and leg roll and clonus and then uh, coordination, sensation. Coordination? Like, yes. He, uh, shin heel test, shin heel test. Yes. Okay, shin heel test, yes. Right? R right, and yes, clonus, I will check the clonus. Uh, how, would you, how, would you, how would you check that? What would you clonus? ask the patient to do? Yes, please. Uh, clonus, uh, I will uh, dorsiflex the foot, and if there is clonus, then uh, foot will move automatically. It is called clonus. Okay. Coordination, you check the reflexes. Okay. All right. Yeah, leg roll. Yeah, that you can do. Okay. You still have few seconds. Anything else you want to add? Yes, I, I, uh, I can do the lymphadenopathy if any problem. and. This will a sensation. I will check the sensation of the trunk and limbs. Yes. For a what else is important if time would have allowed you? Which allowed to what are you asking, madam? Uh, what else would you have examined if time would have allowed you? If there would have been uh, enough time, you would have examined the cervical sp spine and both hips. Always, whenever examining a joint. So yes. Joint above and joint below. Okay. Can you please present your examination now? Uh, I have uh, Mr. Brett uh, uh, and uh, this uh, lady has uh, uh, severe back pain and uh, she also uh, has a knee joint problem. But uh, her walking is uh, antalgic uh, okay. walk and uh, she has a tenderness in the uh, lumbar spine. And uh, she has restricted uh, uh, movement of the uh, uh, thoracic and lumbar spine, as well as uh, uh, her straight leg raising test, lassigue uh, test, reverse lassigue test are restricted and painful. So, and uh, Schober test? And Schober test uh, is uh, yes. less than 20, less than 20. Was so, it negative or was it positive? How, how would you interpret that? It is negative, okay, yes. then uh, negative. So uh, my conclusion is that she has a backache, severe backache and maybe uh, mechanical, mechanical backache or maybe okay. mechanical What backache. other differential diagnosis would you consider? It, it may be cardiac, it may be due to trauma, due to some fractures, maybe some um, malignancy. These are the- uh, Or the spinal canal stenosis, okay. Spinal. How would you confirm your diagnosis? Uh, I, I have done the history and examination, and I will do a uh, X-ray lumbosacral spine and MRI of the lumbosacral spine, and okay. I will also do some blood test, especially uh, blood CP uh, and tuberculosis test. HLA B25. Right. What are the treatment alternatives that you can offer to the patient? Uh, this patient can be treated conservatively uh, as well as okay. by surgery, and it will be depend on MRI report, but the conservative treatment by the analgesic uh, physiotherapy uh, gel and uh, involving aids and exercises oh, and surgery good. treatment by neurosurgeon by disectomy and laminectomy if okay. it is advisable. Yes. 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 So, uh, right, if you can go back and think and tell me this patient is a female, so what is the most important thing that you have missed? I want to Ma figure I, In the beginning, I asked the chaperone. You didn't. Yes, you should. You should have. Yes, I, 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 I mentioned I, it. Well. 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear. You said I'll uh, expose the patient with dignity. I couldn't hear that you asked the chaperone. Yes. I'm sorry, Chaperon yes, I didn't was... hear. This is very important. In my case, yes, uh, I have written a female patient, which is yes. because I want to see if you, are, uh, you people are paying attention or not. But in the exam, it will be a male patient, right? Yes, sir. So yes, you don't have to worry in exam, it will be a male patient, but here are purposely just to see if you people are paying attention or not, if there should be any difference in male or female examination, that's all. Otherwise it was good. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Madam, I want to ask one question that uh, yesterday we did the knee examination. So yes. we will, uh, in six minutes, we will do one knee examination or no, both so knee examination. Sometimes. Yes. Both. Yes, you should, uh, ideally. And then you have to decide which side you want to begin first. Mm, both exams. Sometimes we uh, compare simultaneously doing the both yes. exams. Sometimes so the, uh, we will do. This is like, this is tricky. You have to save the time and you have to do it in a way that uh, you examine both joints. Because always whenever we're examining the joints, we're comparing it one with the other. And then once you are doing it, you have to do it quickly. Like if patient is complaining of uh, pain in the left knee, so simultaneously you're inspecting the both knees side by side. And uh, quickly, once you're examining, quickly you'll examine the right knee first and then the left knee or uh, yeah. So quickly you have to do the both, exam both examinations. Yes, but I understand. This query is clear. But uh, technically, you have to do it in a way so that you are not wasting time and you are just examining as well, both. Yeah, right, madam. Right, good, thank you. Here is your question, which is not much to read. Right, so if you're very well understood, considering the surgical anatomy patient, kindly please identify the structure, label A to F, please. Okay, uh, A is ICA. What is that? Which one, ma'am? A. A. Yes. Please. A is ophthalmic artery. Mm, no, B. B. Posterior cerebral artery. No. C, please. Um, C is uh, anterior cerebral artery. Okay. B. And number. D. D is medial cerebral artery. Yes. E, please. And E is the basilar artery. No. F, please. Oh, yes, E is and the basilar artery. Sorry. Yes, F, please. Yeah. F is the posture communicating artery. Yes, good. Can you please tell me how the circle of wheels is formed? The circle of wheel is it by the uh, it end uh, when the vertebral artery is formed by the joining of the two vertebra 
um, is largely formed by the uh, two vertebral artery, and it gives the first branch of the posterior cerebral artery, which uh, communicates with the um, internal carotid artery by the posterior communicating artery, which later on come uh, gives branches uh, to uh, anterior cerebral artery uh, uh, from the anterior communicating artery. Okay. Right. Can you please tell me if you can identify this arrow? What does it signify? This is the uh, um, medial cerebral artery aneurysm. Aneurysm. Okay. In which condition this is seen? It is seen in the uh, berry aneurysm rupture, which is known as subarachnoid hemorrhage. In subarachnoid hemorrhage, but then it is also seen in the condition where these sort of aneurysms can be found in another part of the body as well. Can you? Uh, abdominal aorta, ma'am. Okay, well, uh, all right. You already told me what happens when this aneurysm ruptures. Uh, signs of okay so uh, yes can you tell me the signs of uh, middle cerebral artery infarct there is hemiplasia of the uh, contralateral lower half of the face as well as upper and lower extremity yes. and there is aphasia okay good of the dominant side can you tell me the course of the vertebral artery please um, so, uh, vertebral artery um, enters the skull um, through the foramen magnum, then uh, passes the posterior arch of the atlas and passes through the uh, foramen transversarium of C1 to C4, then it uh, passes uh, and it, uh, um, then uh, joined together at the lower border of the pons to form the basilar artery. And this whole course is in the subarachnoid space. Good. Okay. Can you tell me, um, can you tell me what is the one branch of uh, internal carotid artery which it gives before entering the skull? Uh, ophthalmic artery. Okay. Can you please tell me uh, the common carotid artery and its branches, branches of the common carotid artery? Uh, the common carotid artery, it um, arises uh, from the, uh, the left one from the arch of the aorta and the right one from the, um, from the back of the artery. Uh, then uh, it gives the course in the upper third of the um, C, uh, C4 and bifurcate it into the external carotid and internal carotid artery. Yeah, can you please tell me, can you please, uh, all right, I'm sorry, I've already written again. I thought they were, okay. If you can uh, identify, if you can tell me what kind of image are you looking at? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me what kind of image you're looking at? Uh, this is a carotid arteriogram. Okay. Uh, or angiogram. What? Now you can mm. uh, read and tell me if, if you can please tell me what you can Okay. See. So uh, this is the angiogram where it shows the uh, internal carotid artery and yes. uh, medial cerebral artery and his branches, um, temporal parietal artery and in front is there is anterior cerebral artery. Yes, but what else can you see? What's happening? There is an aneurysm at the junction of the internal carotid and the middle, uh, just above the internal carotid artery. Okay, right. So what's happening because of aneurysm? How, how can you tell it's, it's an aneurysm, not a blockage or a infarct or anything? How would you tell the difference? Uh, uh, there is a dilatation of the yes. arterial wall, uh, yes. three point five times of its normal size. Normal size then yes. it is known as aneurysm. Okay, if it would have been uh, an infarct, how would it uh, 
how would that have presented? Infection, there will be a hyperdense area. Yes. We'll show. Good. And what would be the distal infection? How would that be? Um, that will not, uh, there will be a uh, showing no blood supply. Yes. And there will, that will show hypodense and uh, or. Can you please tell me uh, what passes through from a trans person? Foramen transversarium. Yes, yes. Foramen transversarium passes the vertebral artery. Yes. How it from uh, C1 yes. to C C6. Yeah, yeah. And then how it enters C1 to C6. Yes. Can you please tell me the code? it uh, started? Yeah, the vertebral artery enters uh, from passes the posterior arch of the atlas. Yes. Then it enters the foramen transversarium. Uh, C6 to C1 yes. and from the C1 it then uh, goes forward and join together to form the uh, basilary yes. artery at the lower border of the bones. Yeah, and that's how it enters the cranium. Okay, good. Guys, what more I can ask you? Basically, you've answered all the yeah, good time. Nice. Okay. I thought this image was without labeling, then I would have asked you to identify the Yes, ma'am. In in another uh, presentation, I think it's just the yeah, image, not the labels. But here, I I'm sorry, you could see. All right, good. Amen. Thank you. Yes, and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering a surgical pathology patient, kindly tell me after reading the stem, what are the di differential diagnoses that you'll think of? For differential this diagnosis for this patient, uh, for this patient uh, is uh, tuberculosis. Uh, and then maybe carcinoma of the lung. Okay. Or any third uh, option? Uh, lymphoma. Okay, lymphoma, right. Can you tell me how would you go about and confirm your diagnosis? To confirm the diagnosis, I need certain tests, sputum examination. Yes. For culture and uh, cyto culture and uh, also cytology. Yes. And? And. And uh, I also need PCR. Yes. I can go for Mentox test. Yes. Can and, you uh, explain the procedure how the Montex, Montex test is done? Uh, there's certain uh, 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 PPD that is uh, injected. Uh, yes. Injected. Uh, Where about it's subcutaneous? Yes, good. Yes, yes. and uh, then we check for the reaction. Yes, in about how long? What's the duration you'll wait? Uh, uh, I think six hours. Six hours only? But I'm not sure. Yes, you'll find out and you'll tell me next time. Sure. All right, okay, coming back. Uh, there are more tests that you can do. 
maybe you can even go for the lymph uh, node FNAC. Uh, lymph node biopsy, FNAC, yes. and uh, PCR. PCR. PCR, you already told me. Okay. Because your second uh, second differential was to rule out lung carcinoma. All right. Okay, you told me so, those. Yes. A report comes back, and then you you get to read that there is a granuloma. In order to confirm your diagnosis, what type of granuloma you should expect in the report? Uh, in this patient, uh, I'm suspecting caseating granuloma. Okay. Caseating necrosis and uh, uh, the uh, graziating necrosis and uh, 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 along with granuloma. Right. Can you please tell me, uh, yes, uh, non caseating granuloma, which can be can be seen or, or, or found in chronic inflammatory conditions? Uh, yes, it has carcinoid syndrome or uh, is leprosy or uh, uh, <coughs> uh, so not carcinoid, it's sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis, sarcoidosis. yes. So sarcoidosis, even Crohn's, uh, these are Crohn's, the inflammatory yes, conditions because, in which, yes, yes uh, will be found. But if you are talking about lung carcinoma and there is granuloma, what type of granuloma would that be? How that granuloma yeah. would be different from this caseating granuloma? Uh, 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 talking about the sarcoidosis, no, malignancy, your second uh, most uh, provisional diagnosis. There may be, yes, some, uh, then uh, this may be malignancy, and uh, uh, then there will be some rich convex cells or... Uh, the most important thing you'll find in the granuloma would be presence of a foreign body, okay? All right, can um, you please yes. tell me, uh, right, what is the most rapid detection method of mycobacterium? Uh, that is RPA. Yes, please tell me the whole name, not the abbreviation. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, rapid. Recombinase. Rick. Polymerase amplification. Recombinase polymerase amplification. Okay. Can you please tell me if uh, in the granuloma, along with the granuloma caseating, Granuloma, you found giant cells. Can you tell me what are giant cells? Uh, giant cells, these are the uh, multinucleated yes. and large cells, yes. which are formed by the fusion of the uh, uh, of the uh, fusion of uh, epithelial uh, cells and uh, uh, oh my guess. All right, can you please tell me, uh, once you have to collect the sputum sample, can you please tell me what is the procedure or the protocol that you that you will follow? Uh, first of all, after uh, collecting the sample, I will label it and then I will uh, send it to the uh, laboratory, uh, to the cytology laboratory and uh, also to the uh, uh, cytological body and uh, to the microbiology body, and uh, I will label it with the uh, the name micro uh, biological hazard uh, biological uh, biological uh, sample B, and the code will be U N double uh, three seven three, and okay. uh, then I will also inform the uh, CDC and uh, uh, consultant in the CDC and. Uh, uh, okay. Can you please tell me, other than mycobacterium tuberculosis, what are the these mycobacterium? It's uh, also there are other mycobacteria also present. Can you name few? Mac yes, ma'am. Macrobacterium avium intercellulare, macrobacterium bovis. Yes. Macrobacterium bovis. Yes. And yes. mycobacterium cancer. Uh, 
cancel uh, cancel yes, cancel okay. cancel cancel yes cancel all right if uh, yes result comes back and patient is diagnosed with the uh, tuberculosis right what would be your next step what would you think or what would you do uh, i will uh, report the case yes very good considering it is a community yes correct community yes to yes. to cdc to consult the cdc yes. and uh, then i will also consult the patient about the disease yes. and uh, start with the uh, dots yes and uh, uh, then i will also ask the patient to avoid from any job in the food place yes. and uh, to uh, cover his mouth and nose with mask yes. uh, while sneezing and uh, if the patient has any contacts nearby yes. then i will also get the uh, name of those guys. and uh, if they come uh, will consider them they come then i will uh, also give treatment to them after screening good right can you one last question tell me how long tuberculosis medication should go for or should be taken? The changing is uh, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, treatment, uh, uh, treatment would uh, last for uh, nine months, six to nine months. Okay. Right. How would your strategy change if a patient does not respond to the normal uh, anti-tuberculosis medication? Uh, then I will check for the uh, if this is there. Uh, I will check for if the patient is taking medication regularly or not. Yes. And also, I will check if the patient uh, uh, the organism uh, is multi-drug resistant. Yes. And if then it is multi drug resistant, then I will uh, check the sensitivity or uh, after uh, uh, taking the samples from the sputum or uh, appendage. And if the uh, culture and sense after culture and sensitivity, then I will uh, give the medication to which the patient is sensitive. Right, good. Well, it's gone, but can you please tell me what can you see? I don't, uh, what kind of uh, yeah? What are these um, dark? The, these large um, multi-nucleated giant cells. Yes. Uh, along with the necrosis. Okay. And in the in the right side, and yes. also some granulation, some granulation tissue. All right, good. What is the common stain which is used for uh, tuberculosis? Two types of stain are used. Uh, solid, uh, zeal, uh, sorry, Zilnitz. zeal and stain. Yes. Zeal and stain. Yes. Only one. Okay, if we can. Can you please tell me what can you see? Can you read this image, please? Uh, this is uh, X-ray, uh, well, uh, PA view yes. uh, of the patient. Yes. And uh, what are these? Uh, these are uh, okay, uh, some pulmonary infiltrates. Okay. On the more on the right side. Yes. And uh, like millimeter book. Yes. Don't hesitate. Say it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good. Ma'am, those uh, uh, giant cells, they are formed by macrophages, multinucleated yes, uh, cells, which are uh, formed by the fusion of the macrophages, and uh, there are also by the uh, chronic inflammation. Yes, good, thank you. Question. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right. So if you have read and understood, considering this critical care scenario, kindly tell me how would you manage this patient now? Uh, Ma'am, since it is a road traffic accident case, I will manage the patient according to the advanced trauma life support protocol. Yes. I will start with assessment and uh, management of airway and cervical spine control, breathing, circulation, disability, and exposure. Yes. I will start the assessment of the airway by look, feel, and listen principle. I will yes. uh, look at the release of the chest, feel for the breath of air on my cheek, and yes. listen for the, any abnormal sounds like uh, strider, wheeze, grunting, gurgling, and uh, then I will. Uh, and then I will see if there is any uh, foreign body, blood clot, any material present in the mouth. So I will open the mouth, sweep my finger inside, take out the foreign body, or if there is any uh, uh, any fluid or semi-solid material, then I will apply suction. And uh, after this, I will manage the airway by applying the basic airway maneuvers, that is uh, chin, uh, jaw, lap, uh, jaw, jaw thrust and uh, chin lift. I won't be doing because I'm not sure about the cervical spine at the moment. Mm -hmm. So yes. after this, I will uh, be proceeding with the basic airway uh, adjuncts, and uh, they will be oropharyngeal airway or nasopharyngeal airway. If a skull base fracture is suspected, I will not use uh, nasopharyngeal airway. And after this, I will uh, immobilize the spine using triple immobilization. That right. is the use so, of um, ours. Thank you. Yes, can you please tell me yes, when sir. the patient arrived, patient had Glasgow coma scale of 15, and then yes, after a while, after a while, you notice that it has decreased to eight. Can you tell me why? What has happened and what is this condition called? Uh, Ma'am, uh, the patient had a uh, lucid interval. Yes. Uh, in which, uh, um, which is uh, which is characterized by um, uh, which is characterized by a temporary improvement in the consciousness level, and following uh, followed by a rapid deterioration of the Glasgow commas. Uh, yes that leads to uh, increase in intracranial pressure. Okay. Intracranial pressure. Right. Yes. Can you please tell me what should be the normal intracranial pressure? Um, the normal is 7 to 15 millimeters of mercury. Uh, is there any difference while you are standing or lying down? Yes, ma'am. This is in the supine position and yes. when the patient is standing, it is minus 10 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Can you please tell me what are the ways by which you can measure intracranial pressure? No, you can classify um, are, and tell me. Yes. Yes, ma'am. They are classified into invasive and non-invasive. Yes, the invasive good. would be intraventricular drain and intra-parenchymal uh, probe placement, um, subdural, uh, um, uh, subarachnoid probes, epidural probes, and uh, lumbar punctures. And the uh, non-invasive methods include tympanic, uh, tympanic membrane displacement method and transcranial um, doctor ultrasound. Very good. Okay. Can you please tell me uh, what are the what are the conditions or things that you have to keep in your mind when a patient presents with you with intracranial pressure? What are, what are the things that you cannot do or what are the things you can do with the patient? So uh, ma'am, for um, we need to decrease the intracranial pressure so as yes. to maintain the cerebral perfusion pressure. So in that case, we have to decrease the cerebral edema. Firstly, yes. uh, by uh, elevating the head head of the patient to 30 degrees and giving him um, manitol in a dose of 0.5 to 1 grams per kilogram. And yes. um, then Basically, I want, Yes, I want you to tell me why you cannot do lumbar puncture when a patient presents with... Yes, um, lumbar puncture cannot be done because it causes herniation of the brainstem. And coning, yes. Okay. Yes, coning. Can you tell me what is pushing tried? Uh, it is the um, it is a combination of vagal and uh, sympathetic... Um, uh, sympathetic uh, stimulation in response to increased intracranial pressure and is characterized by bradycardia, hypertension, and uh, irregular breathing. Very good. How is it different from Cushing reflex? Um, Ma'am, uh, uh, Cushing reflex, it occurs uh, in response to intracranial pressure. Yes, to increase intracranial pressure. And it leads to hypertension and, and uh, bradycardia yes. and irregular breathing. Yes, okay. Can you please discuss what is a Monroe Kelly hypothesis? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, according to this hypothesis, the skull consists of three compartments. 80% yes. of it is occupied by the brain. Uh, skull, um, by the brain. brain 10% yes. is occupied by the cerebral spinal fluid and 10% yes. is occupied by the heart. So under normal uh, circumstances, a small uh, increase in one component, uh, component will lead to a decrease in the volume of the other component as a compensation to keep the intracranial pressure in range. 
but uh, when the intracranial pressure ranges um, around 25, <coughs> sorry, around uh, 25 millimeters of mercury or more yes. than that, then a yes. small increase in the volume of one compartment leads to a major or uh, excessive increase in the volume of the other compartment, Very good. which leads to brain stimulation and body. Very good. Okay. Can you please tell me? All uh, right. Uh, you already told me. Right. Okay. If you have taken the CT, if you have done the CT scan of this patient, what do you expect to find? So I expect to find a hypertense lesion, um, a biconvex bicon hypertense lesion, along can with you, that uh, midline yes. shift can and compression of the ventricles. Can you read this? Can you read it for me, please? Yes, ma'am. This is a CT scan of the head uh, yes. with contrast. It is showing a hypertense biconvex lesion. Also, it is showing midline shift and compression of the ventricles. Yes. So most probably, it is extra dural hematoma. Okay. Uh, how would that, that have been if that was subarachnoid hemorrhage? Um, I'm subarachnoid would be a hypertense uh, lesion, uh, which would be crescent shaped. All right, very good. All right, this patient has vomited twice. Uh, can you tell me when this patient would qualify to be intubated? What is the um, criteria to intubate a patient with head injury, in other words? Um, in this patient's uh, Glasgow Farmer scale has decreased um, from 15 up to 8. So this yes. is the criteria for his okay. intubation. Also, this patient needs to be shifted to the hospital. So I would go for prophylactic intubation as well. Okay. And, uh, also this, and also in order to prevent hypoxia-induced encephalopathy, I would be intubating him. Yes. Can you please tell me what are the benefits of intubation? How would a patient benefit from it? Uh, it would um, it would uh, maintain um, so, uh, it would maintain the oxygen levels, adequate oxygen levels for the brain. And, the patient yes. would not uh, the patient would not hypoventilate. Uh, he would be able to ex um, uh, excrete out the carbon dioxide or exhale out the carbon dioxide. Yes. And uh, also, it would uh, prevent um, extreme uh, increases in the intracranial pressure. Okay, good. Can you please tell me, as long as uh, you <coughs> want to intubate your patient, how would you take care of the nutritional status of this patient? Uh, so, ma'am, it depends uh, if the patient has a skull-based fracture, so the patient cannot take enteral nutrition. So, mm -hmm. um, in license with the nutrition uh, nutritionist, I would uh, go for total parental nutrition. Yes. Yes. For how and long? Otherwise, if the patient can, uh, till the patient can return to his um, enteral or all right. When would you judge or when would you decide that patient is fit to be extubated? Uh, when the patient is maintaining normal oxygen and carbon dioxide levels, that is oxygen levels up to partial pressure of oxygen up to 80 millimeters of mercury yes. and partial pressure of carbon dioxide up to 30 to 35 millimeters of mercury. Yes. And also when the Glasgow comma of the uh, scale um, score of the patient, it increases becomes yes. normal up to 15. And yes. uh, when the patient is, and when the intracranial pressure of the patient decreases. Very good, okay. Right, uh, right, okay. One last question and then I'll let you have a break. Okay, uh, one CT scan you've already done. Okay, when would you decide when to repeat for the next CT scan? If um, I'm there, um, progressively increase intracranial pressure despite all the managements and if yes. the patient is developing focal neurological deficits yes uh, is there any time limit in two hours or one hour or yes ma'am uh, we will be doing it after every four hours very four good. to six hours good very good thank you starting the timer and here I'm is your question yes
Right. So if you have read and understood, considering it is city construction, can you begin? I will enter the room, wash my hand, give the patient. Hello, how are you today? I'm good. I'm Dr. Mohammed, one of the surgical doctors. I have been asked to ask you some questions related to your condition. Are you okay with that? Yes. Thank you. May I confirm your name and age, please? Yes, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you, Alex. So, how can I help you today? Doctor, I'm having trouble with my stools, you know, for the last two days, they are really hard to pass and I'm really scared because I saw some blood as well. Uh, I'm really ready to feel that. When did you feel it's going to be that? Um, doctor, for the last two days, I'm having like difficulty passing stool. They are really hard and the blood I saw, I saw just, I'm just like, I keep on seeing it time and again and I've been seeing it for the last six months and I'm really scared. That's why I rushed to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I uh, apologize for that. Does it go and come to the change recently? Uh, yes, it, it's been coming and going. And it's mm -hmm. usually whenever I move. Okay. Is there anything which makes this uh, like bleeding increase or stop improving? No, doctor. Nothing is helping. Okay. Did you notice any clots associated with? Mm, no, not clots, but it's like fresh blood that I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the amount of support? It's like streaks? It's like a teaspoon or more? Mm, it must be a teaspoon. Teaspoon. Okay. Does it uh, get out alone or mix it with the spoon? Mm, no. Sometimes uh, it's, it's usually mixed with the stool. It doesn't come alone. It's okay. Did you notice any change in your appetite or something? Yes, I don't feel like eating now. Usually I used to go out with my family and enjoy eating, but now I don't feel good. So. Okay, did you notice any, any intentional weight loss recently? Yes, my wife has told me that I have gone very weak and I must have lost about one stone. Over how long? I think for the last three to four months, although I'm not dieting. Okay, did you notice any pain associated with no, doctor, no pain, nothing like that. Okay, did you notice any change in your in your bowel habit? Like sometimes you have diarrhea, sometimes you have constipation. Mm, yeah, but now I'm having like difficulty passing stool. It's they are really hard to pass. I haven't uh -huh. noticed any new stool. Okay, did you notice any like painful red eyes and any mouse ulcer? No, doctor, nothing like that. I've noticed. Okay. Any joint pain or uh, back pain? No, no, nothing like that. Okay. Did you notice any like itching around your uh, past of, uh, back passage of your any like itching or any other swelling? No, nothing like that. I can think of. Okay. Do you have any history of long standing constipation? Uh, no. It's just recently that I've noticed that my stools are really hard to pass. Otherwise, I've never had this complaint. It's okay. Have you been abroad? recently no i haven't traveled okay do you have any fever associated with no do you feel like you are overly there yes i do feel overly tired and exhausted most of the time uh -huh. i feel like lying in the bed yeah yeah for that mr alex uh, do you often see your gb for any other medical reason other than this uh, I'm just hypertensive, doctor. For that, my GP has put me on some pills and it is well controlled with that. Uh, since when and what are you taking for? I don't know the name of the drug, but I've been hypertensive for the last 10 years. Okay. Have you ever underwent any surgery before? No, never. Is there any, are you taking, uh, and you are allergic to any drugs? Uh, no, doctor, I'm not. Okay. Is there any family member who has the same condition? Yes, doctor. My uncle he passed away with some uh, with some cancer of his uh, large bowel. I mean gut, but I don't know the details, and I'm really scared. What if um, it's cancer, doctor? So can you tell me I'm if it's sorry. cancer? I'm really sorry for that. Please do accept my sincere condolence for your uncle. Thank you, doctor. Uh, so, Mr. Alex, just want to ask you a personal question, please. What is your occupation, and where do you live? I worked as a banker, doctor. Now I'm retired. But I, ha I have one concern, doctor. I just mentioned to you that what if it's cancer? So is that cancer? Actually, uh, it's early to say that we have to do some investigation and then we will tell you and examine, okay? Okay. Okay. 
So do you smoke or drink alcohol, Mr. Alex? Yes, doctor. I'm a heavy smoker. I drink about, I smoke about two to three packets per day. And I've been smoking for the last 30 years. And I drink um, about two pins per day for the last 20 years. Okay. So, Mr. Alex, what do you think is the cause? I don't know, doctor. I'm just concerned. Like I told you, I'm just concerned. What if it's cancer like my uncle had? And I'm really scared mm -hmm. because people told me that it might be cancer. And I it's not yes, you see that coming out of your back passage, you know? So I'm really scared. Yeah, yeah. This might be difficult for you. I appreciate your concern, but it's early to say that, okay? So, Mr. Alex, uh, what are you hoping us to do for you? Just help me out to find the cause and just treat me, doctor, so that I just can rid get rid of this. Yeah. Okay, we'll do the right thing for you. So, uh, is it your worst concern that you, is this cancer, is it your worst concern? Yes, doctor, this is my worst concern. I'm okay. extremely scared because I think my life will never go back to normal then. Okay, so Mr. Alex, just want to ask you a few questions. Can you summarize your history now, please? Okay, if time has allowed me, I would like to ask for a systemic review. Yes. And thanks, Vision. Mr. Alex, 64 years old, male, presented his bleeding by rectum started in the last six months. But uh, it's fresh in color, it's like teaspoon in amount, and patient is also having constitutional symptoms in the series of uh, loss of uh, appetite and also weight loss. He yes. lost about 20 stone in the last three, four months. And also patient has changed the bowel habits. And patient is hypertensive since 10 years, and he don't know the what medication. What are your patient diagnosis for this patient? And my main differential diagnosis could be C A uh, colon and also it could be due to uh, inflammatory bowel disease, could be due to uh, anal condition like hemorrhoid and in the could be also gastroenteritis. Okay. What are the most important investigations that you'll carry out to confirm your diagnosis on this patient? Uh, first, I would like to do the blood test, CBC to assess if any anemia and platelet to see if any thrombocytopenia and also ESRC active protein so to rule out any infectious, uh, like inflammatory bowel disease. And uh, also do group and cross matching to uh, and do the bleeding profile. After then, I'd like to do some imaging in form of uh, abdominal x ray, see if any toxic uh, megacolon. And also, I will do bronchoscopy. And yes. uh, if there is available, then I'll go read it sigmoidoscopy for with biopsy. Yes. Then I'll okay. go for an immune abdominal ultrasound or a CT scan to okay. just diagnose if there's any malignancy. Yes. And also I'll do the stone analysis and fecal local uh, uh, fecal local blood test to there there is any Very good. Thank you. Yes. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it's history taking station, can you begin? Good evening. I'm Dr. Shegun. I've washed my hands. Can I confirm your name and age, please? Uh, my name is Peter, 56 year old. Okay, nice to meet you, Peter. This evening, I would like to examine, I would like to ask you some questions about what brought you to the hospital. 
Hope you are, it's okay with you. Uh, yes, okay. Okay, what's your, com what's your main problem today, sir? I have several problems. First of all, I have uh, blood in my urine for the five weeks. Then I have uh, a pain in my groin and uh, on left side of the abdomen for two days. I'm, I'm also feeling so lethargic. Sorry about that. And um, about the pain, do I get your analgesics now or you are comfortable to continue? No, I... I uh... Hello? I can't hear you. Yes, I can't hear him again. Yes, can someone else continue? Hello? No, it's okay, doctor. Yes. Okay, yes. all right, yes. thank you. Okay, about about the the um blood that you are seeing in your urine, is it all the urine that is bloody or is just part of it that is bloody? Yes, Actually, uh, it is, it is uh, sometimes it is mixed with blood and sometimes it is it is uh, clot like blood. Okay. Oh sorry about that. Can you quantify this amount of um, blood that is in your urine? If you pass urine one time, is it? Can you get an estimate of the quantity of the blood? Uh, I cannot measure, but uh, uh, for clot, I can say it is uh, one big spoon. Okay. Is the blood, the color of the blood, is it red or is dark in color? It is a light red color, pink color, you can say. Oh, sorry about that. There any blood, any bleeding, any blood coming out from other part of your body? No, no. Okay. Any pain in your tummy? In your tummy, do you have pain? Yes, I have pain in my right side, left side of the of your loin. abdomen and, and okay. side of the abdomen. Any any swelling in your in that your left side of your loin? Any swelling? I I feel some he heaviness on my left side of abdomen. Oh, sorry about that. Then, and do we, the any trauma before this pain, before this your uh, blood coming out, any trauma, any injury to your tummy before you started passing the urine your, in your urine? No, no, there is no, no history. Okay. Then the, the, any swelling in your tummy? No swelling? Uh, I, I feel uh, some swelling on my left side of left the tummy. Any problem? Do you have um, um, your amount of urine that you pass now? Is it now more frequent that you pass urine, or you have difficulty in passing the urine? Uh, no, uh, there is no difficulty in urine, uh, but sometimes urine is stopped, then clot comes, blood clot. Comes. Sorry about that. Any weight loss when you don't want yes. to lose weight? Yes, uh, I have lost uh, six kilogram. Oh, sorry about that. In last uh, one month. Sorry about that. Your appetite is this still good or is bad, or has has it reduced or you are still eating properly? Uh, no, my appetite is decreased. I I'm not uh, eating so much food. Sorry about that. And do you feel weak most times? Yes, I am lethargic. Oh, and sorry sleepy. about sorry about that. The, this is your the. The any time there is any time that you notice stone in your urine, apart from the blood that you notice in your waterways, that you pass out stone anytime. No, no, I no. do not have any problem of stones. Okay. Is, is there any time that your body was hot that you have fever? Uh, no, no, there is no fever. No. Okay, do you take a beet root fruit or free scent? No, no, I, I never listen to beet no. fruits. Okay. Your 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 factory worker. Which work do you do in the factory specifically? Uh, we are uh, coloring uh, cloths and some dye working in the factory, okay. but I do not name the dyes and chemicals. Name. You don't know the dyes. For how long, sir? Uh, uh, I'm working for the last fifteen years. Fifteen years. Okay, I want to ask you some personal history. You've been hypertensive now for how long? And then the drug that you are using. Do you know the drugs? Which, uh, no, I did not use any drugs. For your but hypertension? I, yes, uh, yes uh, I, I am see diet GP control. Uh, oh, uh, my GP advised me diet control, less okay. salt and exercises. All right. 
Then the smoking that you've been smoking for how long, how many uh, sticks per day? Um, I smoke uh, 20 cigarettes a day 20 for cigarettes. last 10 years. 10 years. You drink alcohol too? Yes, uh, I, I am a drinker. For how long? I, for the last uh, 10 years. 10 years. Okay. How many uh, bottles of beer do you take per day? I use uh, five units per week. Okay, all right, thank you for it. The, 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 I saw also ask you some questions. What do you live at home with? Yes, what are you saying? Do, do you stay, do you, who do you live at home with in your house? Who do you live yes. at home with? I, I live with my family, wife, and children. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you summarize your history, please? Okay, I've interacted with um, a 56 year old Smith, a, a dye factory worker. That yes. presented with uh, painless, with um, painless material, but with pain in his loin radiating to his groin. Of about two days, we suggested history of weight loss, anorexia, and easy fatigability. A known smoker and an hypertensive control on uh, diet. Yes. So, what are the differential diagnoses that you consider? My differential diagnosis, I will be considering uh, a renal. A uh, cell tumor. Then I also be considering a uh, material secondary renal cell uh, tumor. Yep. I also be considering a bladder cancer because of, and then also a possible um, uh, prostate and uh, uh, benign prostate enlargement. Okay, or the stone, kidney stones. Okay. Or kidney yes. stones. Uh, yes. Yes. What? What are, uh, what are the investigations that you'll ask for to confirm your diagnosis? Okay, the investigations that I would like to do, I would like to do urine uh, urinalysis, urine uh, microscopy, culture and sensitivity, then urine uh, cytology for, for him. Also, yes. I would also like to do a, an, an abdominal CT scan to, to assess the, the, the abdomen for the possible kidney stone, uh, renal pathology, and then the kidney stone also. Then yes. I would also like to do a full blood count for him as well, and then also clotting profiler. Good. What are the treatment options that you can offer to this patient? If the diagnosis is a renal and left renal cell cancer, it will benefit. I will do a multidisciplinary uh, meeting, and then it can benefit from uh, surgery, nephrectomy, then uh, chemotherapy, and then also benefit from the therapy as well. Okay. Right. Then if it is um if it is stone, it will benefit from uh, you can do a short shock with lithotripsy to break down the stone or open uh, removal of the of the stone that is causing the problem. Yes. Then for benign prostate enlargement, you can have uh, a prostatectomy done either open or transurethral uh, resection. Yes. Good. Thank you. Um, in history, uh, you didn't get the time to complete. So when I asked you to summarize your history, then you could have told me what are the parts of yeah. history taken which were left, uh, especially yes. the ice idea concern. And yes, I didn't do the ice, yes. Yes, and in history, you could have asked about the trauma and he traveled to the foreign country. And uh, if patient has multiple partners or the same partner and so on. Yeah. Yeah, these are the important okay, questions. Thank you so much.